in, in teaching, just remember two things. One is ithar, one is khidmah. And everything in the part of those PowerPoints comes into this. Ithar and khidmah. Ithar, giving preference. So for, we said what? If it's a khidmah, so what was the thing? So I'm the khidmah of these students. So then, how do I, how do I teach them properly? So then we think, okay, I'm going to deliver a lecture. So I have to prepare what I'm going to teach them. So then that's khidmah. You think, I'm serving these people. So how do I serve them? I'm going to teach them ism fa'al and harf. So you prepare that in mind. So you prepare properly. Now I'm going to khidmah, speak slowly. You know the khidmah of them. You're not just saying, I'm coming here, my era is sanik, I'm alka parhara home, that you don't understand, that's your fault. Sometimes you might have to say that openly to make them, put them in the place or to make them, don't make them too lazy. But in your mind, you should have this, that I am doing the khidmah. So I'm going to prepare properly what I'm going to teach. I'm going to present it in the most presentable way possible. Yes? If you're in the khidmah of somebody, you don't say, hey, kana hey, lo kalo. What do you do? You put the phone on the sakhan, you try to feed them, you, you, you know, make sure that they're done after they, you do khidmah. So this is your khidmah. From the time they enter the class and the time they leave the class. If you think of that, and then you thought, so khidmah, you speak slowly. Then you prepare the lesson properly. You know, have they understood or not? All of these will automatically come in. It's, it's, it's all already on the, I made all these small, small short clips. You can watch them later on, or those of you who have not heard it before. Or even as a mudhakara if you want. But it just boils down to this. That you have to have that humility and that down to earth and that really zeal that these are my students. And think of it, you know, you know what happens? There's a complaint, which is true, but it's also there's a reason for this. People say, oh, you only respect your full art teacher. Or you only have mama for full art teacher. Why don't you have mama for all your teachers? It's good for any teacher, I mean. There's some teachers who come to class, they teach you and they go away. And there's some teachers who teach you and they, make sh- they worry about you. So you have more love for that teacher automatically. And there's some teachers who, before class, after class, not only about your studies, about everything about you, they worry about you. So as I again, you have more muhabbat for them, more love for them, more adab for them. So it's not just about coming and delivering a, a, a speech, it's about every single person has an amana. And if this was my son and my daughter, how would I want them to be taught? How would I want them to leave the class? How would I want them to, be, uh, to feel in class? And if you understand this, then everything, you learn everything automatically. If you go through the whole PowerPoint again and say, well, these are the, these things, you'll forget them because you're, you're, you're bored, you're not interested. Or it's like, I would be a much. But if you understand, no, that look, this is an amana, we have these kids, we have these people, these adults, whoever they are, and it's amana, my thing, and I have to fulfill this amana. I am a khadim, and I have to serve these people. Now, automatically, you will think your, your, your mindset will be correct, and you will get everything will start flowing. But, and if you have a thousand points, and a thousand this, and a thousand that, but you don't want to do it. Because sometimes, you know, um, even those people who make these things, you just learn as you go along. Yeah, it saves you time if you, somebody's given you nasiha, know, somebody tells you, you know, it's a tip. Yes? So then it'll help you. But in the end of the day, you have to have it yourself that, no, this is a thing. If you think, well, okay, like preparation. If you just come and think, am I doing khidma of the, am I doing khidma of the students? Am I doing the ithar to the students or myself? One is, I'm going to prepare a lecture, I'm going to teach Mishka. I'm going to give a long lecture, get all the material out, whether they understand it or not. You never think about that. It's not ifa. You're not doing khidma, you're doing khidma yourself. I want to do mutana, improve my knowledge, so I'm just going to deliver the lecture. When it doesn't matter to me. That's their fault. And if you think, no, how can I deliver this in a way that it sticks in their mind? And that's khidma, that's ifa. So everything else. Khidma is that, okay, uh, you come to class, you teach, you go. Well, one student is struggling, they're falling behind. If, if you were the khad, then you'll think, now, I have to serve this student. So now I need to report this student, or I need to have a discussion with other teachers, or the head, or whoever it is, to make sure that this student doesn't fall too far behind. So if all the points you have, if you have this thing that I am khadim, that's what Dr. Abdul Arif Rahmatullah used to say, that the greatest mansib, when you say mansab, the greatest mansab, Arabic is mansib, the greatest mansab that you can have is being a khadim. And the, khad, the, the mansab is such a mansab that nobody will do munaqasha with you. If you want to become prime minister, it's munaqasha. You want to become a uh, head teacher, munaqasha. People fight with you, debate with you, they, they don't want you to become. If you become a khadim, what happens? Nobody's going to fight with you. Yes? And then what happens? They become the most beloved to, beloved to the people and to things. Yes? The more effort you put behind them, the more. And remember that. Um, remember, it's not, if you know, you know you have these accounts and, uh, what do you call it? You have the cloud and you have these accounts and you have tax. Nobody understands it. So the complicated system. Yes? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does hisab of the, our ajr, it's not simple, oh, you taught him, you taught him, so you all get reward the same. How much effort you put in behind that student, you'll get the reward. 
It's not that everybody gets the same way. Well, it can't, it's, not, it's not going to be the same way. That you talk, you come in, you just teach, you give a dar, nothing. And other teacher comes in, he works on the handwriting, he works on them, he gives them a shura, read this book, are you reading that book or not? Come in the weekend, send me, just send me, a, send me write, write some uh, extra work, send me an image on the weekend, upload it to teams, you prepare notes, you prepare things for them, you give it better for them. Whatever you do, it's not going to be the same, is it? It's not simply that, oh, there's, there's going to be an algorithm, that's my word. The, the, the algorithm that Allah uses, I don't know if that's the right word, but the system that Allah's reward is not going to be based upon just simple. How much effort, effort you put in, how much you get out. So everybody, the reward is not just simply, yeah, so if the student does um, you know, a great work afterwards, it's, it's how much ever teacher put in whatever effort, you won't get that reward. Do you understand? So if you keep these things in mind, all the other, all the other things we have in here, like, you know, it's going to be a thing.